Hey guys, so I did not do an intro to this video, so I am going to do it right now. This is going to be a reading vlog on The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. And if you guys haven't heard about this book, it says, Would you defend your husband if he was accused of killing his mistress? Ever since I found out about this book, I've always wanted to read it. And I had so many other books on my TBR that I had to read first. And then I'm like, this is... A perfect vlog to post during October since Halloween and all that stuff. I obviously already read it. I already have my thoughts about it. Kind of show my thoughts during the video obviously and I read some quotes and tell you guys what is going on in the book but I don't give away the ending. I do talk about the book but not so in depth of how I would want to because I don't want to give it away. And so it's basically spoiler free because I don't give away the ending. Um, I just read a lot of quotes that really stuck out to me and like parts in the book that stick out to me. So yeah, I'm excited to get on with the video, but I hope you guys enjoy the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Comment down below any videos you want to next. Subscribe down below if you're new to my channel. Turn on post notifications to get an update every time I post a new video and let's get started. Today we are going to read a psychological suspense, mystery, thriller, all that jazz. And it's The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. And it says, his mistress is dead. His wife is his only hope. We're going to get into this. And I'm excited to read this. I've been waiting to read this for like ever. But I had so many other books that I had to read before this one. And I just didn't want to skip over to this one. Because I feel like this one is going to be really good. I have very high expectations for this book. I don't know why. Let's see how my reactions are. Let's just get into so it. So that prologue already was already intense. I don't even want to read it out loud because it was intense. This tiny, the prologue, and it was already intense. Okay, so I just read the first chapter, and she's already busy, the girl. She's a lawyer, so she's always working on the case and everything. So she's barely home. So her husband, Adam, is always alone. And by reading the back, you already know he has an affair with someone so i'm like i don't know how he freaking plays it off with her because like the amount of love he shows her is like ridiculous and like begging for her to go to the lake at a house with him where they were supposed to be going for the weekend and she can't go anymore and he's just like begging for her to go kind of thing and then like at the end of the chapter he literally was like she said thank you for being patient with me and he goes, I'll wait a lifetime for you and then some. He kisses my forehead, for he kisses my forehead, the tip of my nose, and then my lips. Or at least another 5,256,000 minutes, he smirks. Now hurry to work so you can hurry to me. He said 5,256,000 minutes because that's 10 years in minutes. And it's their 10 year anniversary. And she just gave him a Patek Philippe watch. And yeah. And she engraved it on the back of the watch. So. Okay, so I'm on the second chapter. So it goes back and forth with Adam and Sarah's point of view. So I'm on Adam's point of view on the second chapter. And he's talking about how he met Sarah. They met at a party. And he was in a, the third year of Duke. And he was studying literature. And she was studying political science. Yeah, political science. And she was a first year. She wanted to become a lawyer. And he wanted to become a writer. And she has become one of the best or is the best criminal defense attorney where they live and he has had one success his first book ever but now he hasn't gone back to the same success as he was with the, that first book so like he kind of resents sarah for it she's stuck in her office working all day and then he's stuck in her their second home up like by the mountains or like in the woods or something so He's just talking about how he met her and stuff like that and like there were once you know a happy couple but now it's like they're two separate people you know what i mean so she has well he has always wanted kids and she hasn't wanted kids because she's been she's like busy all the time and all that stuff. So like on top of like not having her around and not having kids, that's why he's like cheating on her and all this stuff. But he like loves her, you know? And like so 
that night he comes back from the second house and he comes home and then like she's like oh i want to have a baby and then he's just like are you serious and he she's he says i have to end it with kelly sarah is my wife my family my whole heart she's done nothing but love me even when it's a distance she has loved me i roll off a staying stay lying next to her i rub her stomach gently sarah is the mother of my unborn child she deserves more and i'm going to give that to her thank you i whisper she kisses my forehead and wraps her arms around me hugging me tightly i want this for us i want what you want she closes her eyes and slowly falls back asleep cradled in my arms but he just left the second house with kelly in it kelly was sleeping next to him and he left her sleeping there and she didn't seem to be moving and then he looked at like kelly's phone and then there was all these messages from kelly's husband and it seems like there's an abusive relationship there um but he leaves her there and then leaves a note for her and saying like oh like you should leave before nine because the housekeeper is coming at nine so he just like left she did not move at all so i'm just thinking like is she already dead but so they just found the girl stabbed to death in the lake house but i don't know how they found the body initially honestly um, maybe the cleaning lady came and then found the body but they arrested adam without telling him why he was getting arrested and he was all confused then he found out like what happened and then they called sarah and sarah was there and then she don't know what's going on either and then she finds out and then they're like oh should i they're like oh should i let him call his lawyer and then before sheriff stevens can speak i interrupt there's no need why they both ask in unison giving each other a puzzled look i'm his lawyer so she's just like i'm gonna be his lawyer blah 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 like she has no like she just jumped in like she didn't even think twice to be his lawyer you know what i mean could go off on him probably but yeah i'm on chapter 10 page 55 the chapters are really short she said adam i need you to understand i am here as your lawyer not your wife i stare at her in disbelief why are you defending me after what i did to you and then she goes because when i said till death do us part i meant it and i'm the only person that has any chance in hell of getting you off yes wow she's really like she went straight in straight in she's looking at him like he's a client and that's it and she'll deal with the rest of the stuff later on so i'm on chapter 18 page 88 and this is in adam's point of view two weeks earlier prior to kelly's death and Kelly had showed up to the lake house, all being up, and then Adam asked her what happened, so she revealed to him about, like, her husband and stuff, Scott. And then she was like, I can't do anything. He has a hold over me. He will find me either way if I run away or not. And she said that her real name was in Kelly Summers. It was Jenna Way. And she was accused of killing her first husband, and he was found stabbed to death, too. How she's going to be found. What? I'm just so like confused right now but I'm just like what is happening she's at the jail like talking to him well is is like interviewing him again for like what happened the day of the murder and so she said Adam I told you yesterday you need to be completely honest with me what you did in terms of your infidelity doesn't matter or what you did to me okay I just don't want to hurt you I reach my hand out to her she pulls away you already have <laughs> Adam's mother is annoying first of all she's just blaming it all on Sarah and it's Sarah's fault that he's in this predicament right now um, they're going to court he has to plead guilty or not guilty um, and she just went to the bathroom to go throw up so I'm like is she pregnant she must be pregnant he pleads guilty he will get 20 to 25 years without parole and if he pleads not guilty, then he's going to go to trial and 
if he doesn't win, then he's gonna be in jail for the rest of his life. And the death penalty is in it, so yeah. And then right now, she's telling him about the 20 years. He said to her, what would you suggest? She said, as your lawyer, I will take the deal, as in the 20 to 25 years. And he said, what about as my wife? I take a moment to decide what to say. As your wife, I, I'd say fight like hell. All right, then tell him no deal. There's positivity in his voice. I don't know where that came from. There's nothing positive in this case. I nod at Adam and he sends back a partial smile, a small glimmer of hope in his eyes. So he's taking not the lawyer her, but the wife her. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I also forgot to say that Scott, which is Kelly Summers' husband, first time that adam bumped into scott not bumped into scott but scott came running into like the police station and beat the heck out of adam and then after that scott showed up at um the jail where adam was and he was like oh i need to know everything and he's like oh but don't you know everything because you read the arrest report and all that stuff because he's a police officer he was like oh yeah i read it but tell me from your point of view scott was like I never did that to her and then like the day she came beaten up was that because he said he was putting up drywall and then he accidentally hit her with the el her, his elbow and then she said she was going to go to the neighbor's house to go get a first aid kit because they didn't have a first aid kit and it ended up she ended up going to the house and saying that he did that to her so someone's lying it's either he's trying to be Scott's trying to look innocent or Kelly has been playing both of them and also she has a third DNA on her that they don't know who it is so so many things I don't know who it is there's two suspects it could be Adam Scott well the third one is an unknown person but I can't think of anybody else I feel like I hope it's shocking because right now I don't know like, I feel like I believe Scott in a way that he didn't do anything to her. But then I don't know. I don't. So Adam has this reporter girl named Rebecca searching up stuff like about Kelly's history and back then and stuff like that. And then they have the evidence with them. And then they compare like these files that sarah brought over to adam so he could look over them to see if there's like four extra eyes to look at the evidence and then they compared it with the photo that he had in his house that was threatening him so he compared that handwriting to the file handwriting and then he's saying that it was Anne or anna or whatever her name is which is sarah's secretary's handwriting so he's just like she has something to do with this she knew all about this so he just left his house even though he has an ankle monitor and he left his house and now he showed up at the office oh my gosh what i just read is crazy and i forgot where bob's face looks familiar which bob works with sarah his wife and he's like it's you and then he's like me what and he said you're nicholas robert miller you're kelly's ex-husband's brother because adam's been looking for kelly's ex-husband's brother because they think he has something to do with it and he's been there all along he's been right in front of everybody's faces everybody's just like huh in the office because everybody's just like what is happening? Oh my gosh. I don't know what's gonna happen. This is the second time he has escaped from prison. And he just got arrested again. For the second time. By the way, I am almost done. 30 to 40 more pages to go.
just finished the book. I finished it in one day. It had 330 something pages and it's 12 o'clock and I just finished and the ending was shocking and I kind of expected the ending. I'm not gonna tell you what happened at the end even though I gave you some spoilers throughout but I'm not gonna spoil the ending for you guys but I expected the ending to be honest. I'm um, kind of shocked at the same time but you know yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>